Ugh, all this firewood. Normally I'd like to leave all this wood just sitting here over the summer to dry, then deal with it in the fall instead of in the heat of the summer. But we have a little bit of a problem with that. It's all heaped up in a pile. This is the wood that came from that silly Bob Ross video I did a few days ago, where we thinned out that spot over there, starting to look so much better. The way it was yarded into the tractor, it put it all in one heaping pile. The problem with that is, the wood on top will have no problem drying over the next couple months of summer we have left. But the stuff underneath the pile is not going to get much sun or airflow, and it's just not going to dry as fast, especially in round form. Whereas this stuff over here, which is just down the road from that stuff over there, is all spread out, where it won't have any problem drying. It's dug fir, which dries fairly quickly compared to hardwood. The good thing about loading this stuff up and taking it away is, I'll get to find out how much wood is here. Years ago, I used to sell a lot of firewood, but I haven't done much of that lately. I have a lot of this type of thinning to do on this property, this kind of material that's just not good enough for saw logs for making lumber out of. So finding out how much firewood I produce from doing that and how much it's worth will help me figure out if producing firewood from that kind of material is worth it to try to help fund the thinning of the forest. Even though it's a softwood, dug fir actually makes very good firewood. It's more dense than a lot of other softwoods like pine, but it burns really hot. It doesn't burn as long as hardwood, but it also doesn't produce much ash. I burn more dug fir than just about anything. Even though I have access to good hardwoods like madrone, and there's a little bit of oak in this pile too. I want to get those out because those will take longer to dry. At this point, they might be wood for next year, which reminds me, even though it's not related at all, in the video where we made all this stuff, Andy from Southern Adirondack Outdoors asked me in the comments what I do with all the slash I create from doing this, which reminded me I meant to talk about that in the video, but I forgot. It was supposed to be part of the video, but I probably got distracted by a bug or something. Since he asked about it, maybe that means others are interested in it too. Like maybe at least one or two of you. The rest of you, just humor me for a minute or two while I talk a little bit about that. It's easy, all you have to do is nod your head and smile a few times. I won't know the difference. We'll make it quick. The trunks got cut up into firewood and a couple saw logs, but we got the rest of all this slash, the tops, the limbs, the guts and the feathers. Part of what I'm trying to do here in the woods is reduce the wildfire hazard. I'm trying to create the conditions so if a wildfire does come through here, there's not a lot of fuel. It'll just burn at a low intensity and just clean up the forest instead of wiping out all the trees. Big trees like these can easily survive low to moderate intensity fires. They're adapted to fire. They actually like having low intensity fires clean up the forest and take out a lot of the competition. But in the process of doing that, we create a temporary fire hazard that has to be dealt with. All these tops and branches that are on the ground, they'll dry out quickly and they'll become a fire hazard. One of the fastest ways to deal with all this slash is just to take a chainsaw, and just lop it up into little pieces. If the material is laying flat on the ground, if it catches on fire, the flames will be relatively low. The lower it is to the ground, the lower the flames are. If it's low to the ground and has ground contact, it'll rot a lot faster. Then the nutrients that are in the branches will go into the soil where the plants can use them. A lot of times that's what I'll do, but this is such a nice spot of the property. I plan on coming back here after the fall rain start and burn the slash, just to clean this place up and make it look really nice. The ash from the fire is rich in nutrients, and I have some methods I use for burning that I think helps the nutrient cycling. We'll do some videos about that after fire season ends and it's safe to start burning. But now I've procrastinated long enough and it's time to go load that trailer up with wood. Okay, back over here to the trailer and wood pile. Oh, hey, look, it's loaded. Huh? How about that? I know what a lot of you guys were probably thinking this whole time. If this guy doesn't stop flapping his jaw and get to work, he's never going to get this trailer loaded. Oh, ye of little faith. Well, how much wood do we actually have here? We didn't quite fill the trailer up. Loosely thrown in like this. This trailer fully loaded, 
heaping a little bit is a full chord. It's a little less than a chord. We'll say about five sixths of a chord. It's probably actually a little more than that, but we'll be conservative. That's about $200 worth of wood, maybe a little more, but we'll be conservative. Firewood's pretty cheap around here. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't been motivated to sell firewood here. I can get $100 more over by the coast property, which is too far to haul it from here, but for that property it works out well. It took me two mornings to produce all this wood. I'm looking down here as if the wood was still there, but it's actually over here. It took me two mornings to do all the thinning, yard the logs in, and cut them into rounds. Both those mornings I started at early o'clock, and I quit just as it was starting to get hot. So maybe three, four hours each day. But most of that time was spent flapping my jaw in front of the camera, moving the cameras around. So because of that, it's hard to figure out how much time it actually took, which makes this whole video pointless. But we can do some estimating. It really didn't take much time, probably two or three hours to do all the actual work. If you divide $200, by two or three hours, that's not bad wages, but we have to factor in loading the trailer, which probably took 20 minutes or so. Then we have to figure splitting the wood. So let's take this to the splitter, see how long it takes to split it. I haven't used this machine in months. Let's see if it'll start. Now I have a thin layer of split wood spread out on top of a pile that was already dry, very dry. Most pieces are now exposed to sun and airflow. It should dry quickly like this. It took one hour to split all that. We'll say we have two and a half hours in cutting the rounds. A half hour to load up the rounds and then drive them over here to the splitter. One hour to split. Now we're four hours into it. Then we'll say two hours to load up a cord into the trailer and deliver it. I think that makes six. So $200 worth of wood divided by that is 33.333 and on and on and on cents dollars per hour. $33 per hour. That's before expenses. But realistically, I'd be selling a full cord. So let's say seven hours for a full cord. We'll get a little more efficiency that'll help us out on the delivery side there. So well, that comes out to about $35 an hour. But let's say we have $50 in expense and call it $200. $200 divided by seven brings it down to more like $28. $28 an hour. But I think I'm being a little bit conservative here. That was more than $200 worth of wood. I just rounded it down to that because it makes easy numbers. There's also some oak in there, which makes it worth even more. And that will be common. There will be some hardwood component that'll come off this place from doing this. So we'll say around $30 an hour to thin this place and make firewood. If we're making firewood out of material that comes from thinning the forest, in that sense, we're using firewood to help prevent or reduce the intensity of wildfire. Of course, with a lot of these numbers, I'm just guesstimating. So mileage may vary. We also have to factor in the satisfaction of doing this kind of work once in a while. 
I don't think I want to do it every day, but, but once in a while it's an enjoyable thing to do. Also the value it's adding to the property and the value it's adding to the trees that are going to grow faster because of it. If it's somewhere around that ballpark, would it be worth it? I'll let you decide. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.